I'm talking so vehemently about butts that I spat all over my iPad. Hey, thanks for joining the Escape With Me book club. Escape with me, Lizzie Sawyer. And me, Sam Reiner. Into our most recent read. Come with us as we evade reality and go into detail about a new book. We're going to be covering it from beginning to end, so remember, there will be spoilers. Today we are going to Oxford, England. Basically. Basically. Published on March 29th, 2022, Four Aunties and a Wedding is the second book of the Aunties series. This time, the wedding is for Medi and Nathan. As their two worlds combined, can Medi handle her family a wedding and the mafia? Question mark? The answer is no. <laughs> no. But that's how these books go. Not at all. So background for this is we both read Dial A for Aunties. We both loved it. And so a second book came out. So here we be. Age level, it's still adult. Content warning. Language, sex, which is a fade to black. Murder, dark humor, and blood. Also drugs. Also drugs. Mostly weed. Mostly weed, but you definitely get people high on drugs and drunk from alcohol. Yep. I mean, there's mentions of cocaine, but it's mostly weed. Judge a book by its cover. It's Medi's wedding. <laughs> it's a cute picture of Medi with her aunt standing behind her in purple dresses. Though the way the dresses are depicted, I would think they would be a much more violent purple. Yeah. But I assume they picked the purple that is on the cover because it complements the other colors on the cover. Yeah, I think so too. That's a nice soft purple. No, it's like sear your eyes out purple. Violet purple. Yeah. Violent purple. <laughs> But it looks very lovely on the cover because they chose a soft green to go with the soft purple and white. They did. They picked a very nice color combo. Yeah, and the art doesn't really do outlines. It's that type of art, so the colors matter a lot. But they all look very nice. They do, with the little dragons on their heads. It's nice. And I'm a little sad. Okay, I know that would have been a lot for the cover artist. I'm a little sad they aren't doing what they do in the book. Drinking tea and holding a microphone. and Yeah. But hey, we got Komodo dragons on the hats. I didn't know that that type of hat. It's called a fascinator. Yep. It's a hat that's kind of sideways and a lot of times has netting. So theirs is very extra. You see Kate Middle Middleton in them all the time. That's what it is. I didn't ever think it had a special name, but she wears one all the time. Yeah, but hers also don't have kimono dragons on the top. No, they're much... Well, I'm not going to say all of them. I'm looking at one that looks like a gigantic pom-pom. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> But they're mainly a little bit more understated, have flowers and bows. And although there's this is one that's pretty wacky. There's a couple of pictures that look more couture where they're kind of a little bit crazier, but none ragging. So that's a point in their favor. I don't know why Medi was so mad about it. I think it's great. I don't think she was ever mad about it. I think that embarrassment of, oh God, people are going to see them in this hat sort of a thing. Just embarrassment. I think they're great. Yeah, I think so too. I think it was wonderful, but it can be hard to get around though. Well, what are people going to think? Yeah, well... <laughs> It's a little hard because it feels like Medi learns the same lessons that she learned in the last book. Oh no, I'm embarrassed by my family. It's so terrible. And then at the end of the book, it's like, wow, I love my family. They're so great. And I should have better communications with Nathan. Okay, but it's a little different on the family end this time because she's like, I don't want my family to ruin things for me with Nathan's family. Yeah, it's definitely a fish out of water more situation where the last time it was, oh crap, we have to hide a body. Different vibes. Probably more relatable in the second book. Yep. So this was a good book, but because it was more personal to Medi in this one, the secondhand embarrassment level for me and then the anger towards what was going down and all that made this book much, much harder for me to read. I probably won't read it again. Yeah. It's, uh, I feel like a huge issue with the book is that the first book, yeah, they were embarrassing and doing all this crazy stuff, but in the end, they were working together. And it it was less personal because even though there was a dead body and oh no, if they find the dead body, then we're all going to jail, right? It wasn't her wedding. Yeah. Nothing that happened with the wedding or anything directly affected her at all, you know? 
Yeah. Whereas this one, Nathan's going to end up wanting to not marry me anymore, or his parents are going to absolutely hate me, or the photos that I was super looking forward to. I got so mad when I realized at the same time she realized that the photographer was fake because she that meant so much to her. Yes. And you are also way more photography centered, so I can't blame you for empathizing with that. Yes. Yeah, so because it was so much more personal for her, I felt it more, and I don't like that. It's well written. I didn't like the emotions it gave me. I didn't like that they were fighting against each other the entire time. I didn't like that Medi kept making excuses not to talk to Nathan. It felt too over the top. Around the time that the aunties drugged themselves, it felt too over the top. And at the same time, not. Only because the last book had a dead man walking down the aisle for a wedding. Yes, but it felt over the top in a different way. Yeah, I agree. It's different. Not over the top in a good way. Especially since a lot of the gags were just replayed gags. Yes. People are drunk, but it's the aunties that are drunk now. And it's like, there were so many things where I was just like, I feel like if you took a second and thought about this. Also, I feel like they got over their drugging a little bit too quickly. Yeah. Okay, I will say this. It's a little funny. For that scene, I like that three of the four aunties were high, but her mom, who is used to having it every single day, was fine on that front, but she got drunk because it was in champagne. (laughs) Also, it takes a little bit longer to get drunk because you have to let it digest. It's not like one glass and then boom, drunk. It also takes longer to get high. Yeah, you also have to let that hit the bloodstream. Both of those things, it takes a minute, (laughs) which is why you get those videos online of people that are like, I accidentally ate three pot brownies and now I'm waiting for it to kick in and I'm so scared. (laughs) Okay, so I had kind of the reverse. I kept being mad at Medi. Yeah, that too. Girl. Tell Nathan. Text him. Communication, please. Literally text him. Hey, this is what's going on. No. I also don't understand what Stephanie was thinking. Okay, Stephanie and her uncles let the whole thing go way too easy. Okay, so here's the thing. Medi is getting married. Her family does a wedding planning business, but Medi doesn't want them to plan it because she wants them to be guests and they can't be guests and be in the moment while planning the wedding. Fair. So her family goes out and finds this group that they are somehow related to too, which I thought was very cute. Distantly related, yeah. Cousins, step-aunts, brothers, nephews, you know, like that. They sit down with them. They have absolutely fall in love. It's someone Medi's age. Okay, the moment, I think it was second aunt, the one that does the hair and makeup. Yes. The moment that she looked at the uncle and was like, yo, I see this picture on Pinterest all over. You're the one that did this? Alarm bells immediately went off in my head and they were suspicious to me from that point forward. Oh, you got it better than I did. Okay, so I did listen to it a second time because I've read it last year and then I was like, I don't remember what happened. (laughs) So I listened to it again. The second time, I did notice how they were like, oh my gosh, this Pinterest picture, you're the one who did it? And then there was a note and it was like, he hesitated for a moment. Yes. Immediately suspicious. But it's Medi and there's a girl her age who also does photography. And then she has three uncles versus Medi who has three aunts. And then Stephanie's grandma is also part of this. So they're going on. Everything's fine. They meet up. They're like, yeah, let's totally do this. We're about it. I was a little suspicious when they were doing the camera talk and Medi was like, hey, how in the world did you do this? What type of camera do you have? And Stephanie was like, oh, I use the same one as you do. And Medi's like, I would never be able to do this. And I'm like, she didn't go to college for it, but she's a professional, super professional. And I was like, that's a little weird, but I didn't understand camera speak. So I kind of wrote it off. I was like, okay, I just don't understand cameras. If Stephanie knew anything about cameras, she could have BS'd it and said that she had a filter lens. Mm. Or one of those little lens cap things you can put on that have a little thing that you take. But I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head. With the pastels? No. You can get ones that'll warp the edges or magnify or give a fisheye lens effect. They're little things you can add to the end of a lens. So it seriously does jump from, hey, we're meeting. We're totally down for this. Also, maybe second aunt and second uncle have a thing for each other. To we are leaving the country to go to London to have the wedding. Which is fine because everything happens at the wedding. 
thing. Yeah, afterwards. So it, it totally works, but that's how much time we kind of sit with them. The only thing that really important happens at the airport, Medi's like, oh no, I brought my taser. And I'm like, girl. Hey, if you don't think about it, sometimes you end up with some weird stuff at the airport. I don't remember what they do with it. Does she throw it away? She has to throw it away, right? They get rid of it somehow. I guess they hand it over or something before she's found with it. I feel like if you walked up to a TSA agent with a taser, you wouldn't be going on your flight. I mean, I don't know. I accidentally packed this. I'm handing it over before it gets picked up in the scanners. So here, take it. Now it's confiscated. Ta-da. Woo. I mean, that or they just threw it away. But it's LAX. And LAX is terrible. Okay, well, then they just threw it away. I would have thrown it away, personally. (laughs) It sucks. Okay, I've only had to go through checks in Atlanta and Minnesota and then a couple places out of the country. LAX is an airport that's set up when you have a connecting flight, you have to leave the airport and go back through security. I went through security to get on the plane that got me here. It's so dumb. I hate that airport. Anyway, okay, so really side note, but of all the airports I've been in, Atlanta is the best. Houston sucks. LAX sucks. (laughs) The Minneapolis airport is decent. I liked the Toronto one. LAX as a concept sucks. <laughs> anyway, she gets rid of the taser, but she has a moment with Stephanie. She was like, yeah, this saved my life. You know, there was a guy and he was terrible. And so I tased him and blah, 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 blah. And Stephanie Bonds is like, oh, yeah, I use pepper spray. So, yeah, that happens at the airport. Anyway, they're in Oxford now. It's a beautiful hotel. Everything's very expensive. Uh, And apparently the ants have decided to take British classes from somebody on Fiverr. Terrible idea. $5 an hour is what their lessons were worth for sure. Because they keep cursing and calling things inappropriate things and mispronouncing things and having a terrible accent. And the audiobook is great because the narrator does the terrible accent. I was actually talking to my mom about it. She started doing the terrible accent and I walked in to my mother's room and I looked at her and I said, all right, so you know this book that I'm reading? She's like, yes. And I'm like, the person they got to read this book is amazing because not only can she do an American accent and a Indo-Chinese accent speaking English, she can do an Indo-Chinese accent pretending to have an English accent. It's so good. <laughs> it's believable and I'm absolutely impressed. Absolutely. I love it so much. And it's one of those things I bet that voice actor had never been asked. (laughs) Can you do? Uh, Yeah, I guess. I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to try. It's great. One thing I'm a little bit sad about is last book used their group chat way more because they're trying to get away with stuff. It's just a bunch of random things they say and then random emojis. I might be misremembering, but I feel like they used it a lot more in the last book. But maybe that's just because there's like three pages of her mom trying to do chat speak to her date. I remember it more prevalently in the last book. So I feel like they did use it more in the last book than this one. Because they only use it once? Yes, only one time. I love it. I would love to be in that group chat. That sounds delightful. I would love to never understand what the heck the emojis mean. I really like the ants and the mom. Probably helps that Medi had a very different upbringing than I did. So, of course, I'm like, that sounds awesome. I love the group chat. (laughs) But anyway, so they're at the hotel. Everything's going great. Medi goes out and drinks with her friends. It has the bachelorette party-esque thing. Yeah. And while they're leaving, she's like, oh, crap. She made a little gift for Seb and Selena. So many S's. So many S's. Her editor had to be like, why? Why did you do this? Why? (laughs) She was like, hey, I made these for my friends, but I also made it for Stephanie because she considered her a friend at this point. And so she's walking up to Stephanie and then she overhears her being like, blur, 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 mafia, blur, 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 blur. She doesn't say mafia. She says something, something, take them out. Oh, yeah. And Betty just confronts Stephanie. I mean, liquid courage, I guess, goes up to her. is like, what the heck is that? And Stephanie pulls her into the alley. And Betty's like, what are you guys, mafia? And Stephanie's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> but don't worry. We're taking someone out because they're evil. So it's fine. So keep having the wedding or, or we're going to kill the cops that you murdered somebody. 
Dun, dun, dun. So that's the dead body setup in this book. We're dealing with the mafia. Yo, for sure. It's definitely. Uh-huh. That's 100% what's going on here. Totally. Totes, my goats. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. If she had told Nathan, so many things could have been avoided. Because he would have been like, ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. That doesn't sound plausible. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, because they're like, oh, if you don't help us, we're going to tell you about the murder. And so Medi ends up telling her mom and all her aunts and stuff. But she doesn't tell Nathan. And then the next day, Stephanie is like, hey, don't tell Nathan. Medi's just like, okay. Because <laughs> he'll want to call off the wedding. And so Medi's like, okay, not going to do that. Even though it would be really easy to just send him a text at any point during this. You know, even if you guys did call off the wedding, honestly, it probably would have made everything go so much better than what actually happened. I it, uh, hmm. Even if you guys only postponed it a day. I will say I get the initial panic to be like, oh, crap, we have to go along with this wedding, but let's try to foil them at the same time. I'm OK with that. It reaches a point. It does reach a point and it reaches it rather fast and then keeps going. And that's when I start getting mad at Medi because she's not helping at at all. At least her hands are doing something. And she's beating herself up through so much of the book. They're like, oh, I'm lying to Nathan. I haven't told him. I should tell him. Yes, tell him. Please. And she ends up having so much alone time with him, even after Stephanie was keeping a hawk's eye on her and whatnot, and had so many opportunities. I counted three distinct moments where she is alone with Nathan, or at least far enough away from Stephanie where she could be like, my wedding planner is the mafia. Keep smiling. It's so exasperating. If it was me, I would tell him. That's your partner in crime. You are marrying them. You want to spend the rest of your life with them and you don't trust him. That's the problem. Benny doesn't trust him. And what's weird is that the author writes her as saying that she trusts him. She puts all of this mental thought of, oh, but I trust him and he's like, a reasonable and blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, you never actually... What? No, she doesn't trust him. And that's the problem. Because she's like, in her head, there is nothing stopping me from telling him. So do it. Do it. Ah, you just said there's nothing stopping you. And that's kind of where I'm like, I feel like the first book is better because that was a ride. We could not have stopped that train at any point. It was just going full barrow, which is apparently her writing style because I've read some of her YAs and it is literally bonkers to the wall. Keep going. What you would expect normal people to stop at? No, she's going to murder the teacher halfway through. She's going to keep going. What have you been reading? <laughs> that one specific was a the new girl reference but <laughs> she th there were so many spots that she could have stopped and then they didn't stop she was not a part of this which is kind of what annoyed me because the last book she was a part of it she was going she was with them they were working together things were going massively wrong but they were working together where in this one she's just there Please don't murder people. Please don't murder. Please don't murder people. Please, please stop talking about murdering people. We're not going to murder anybody. Please stop. We are not feeding him to the cows. <laughs> we're not cutting him into little bits. We're not. No, we're not. No, stop. <laughs> It's a little concerning that when her aunts get high, that they're very pro-murder. <sighs> they're very pro-murder. <laughs> it's concerning. They didn't have that much. Okay. Concern. But like I said, Stephanie's like, don't tell your family. But she tells her mom and aunts, but then doesn't tell Nathan. It's under the guise of, oh, he would call off the wedding. You know, like a responsible person right now. Like a responsible person, especially when the mafia is involved and someone could potentially die like that. Yeah. I'd fight her. There were so many times where she was alone with Stephanie and I would just punch her like when they were doing the first look that would have been a great time to just punch her yes she was alone with Stephanie and Nathan punch her Nathan this is what's happening no can't tell Nathan Stephanie's not that intimidating she's super not she's just infuriating yeah because she keeps popping up Medi's having a good time and then Stephanie's being dumb and being like hey I am right here let her enjoy her wedding 
thing. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, ah, you're making it worse. See, but Medi killed her cousin that she knows is a bad person. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, mm, this is going to be a short episode because it is, it is a bunch of nonsense. We can talk about how they kidnapped the second uncle and then kidnapped the first uncle. The escalation of the kidnappings happens so fast. You hit a point where you're like, what is the plan here? There is no plan. Because you're not going to kill them. Although they keep talking like they will. You're going to have to let them go. So they kidnap third uncle and they're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And I think it's when they kidnap big uncle that they're like, wait a second. They think we're mafia. And so the plan there is to pretend to be mafia because if they don't pretend to be mafia, they think they're going to kill them. They think the only reason they're alive is because Stephanie and her crew think that they're mafia. And it goes to their head and then it causes just more problems. I enjoy how quickly and how easily the ants take on roles of things. Like in this book, it shows that they're really good at acting. I love them. It's very endearing. Okay, I want to sneak in one little scene. They're talking about mafia people and the aunt and her mom aren't taking it that seriously. She's like, why aren't you taking this that seriously? Well, it turns out there was a boy that liked second aunt and he was like, oh, kind of nerdy and sweet and polite and so whatever. And apparently he fell into the wrong crowd and became a mob boss. And so they're like, well, he had to buy second aunt that car. <laughs> he wanted to buy second aunt a Mercedes. And so they're like, well, clearly if he is a mafia boss, mafia is not that scary. And then Medi Googles him. <laughs> And he's terrifying. He's terrifying. He is wanted in murders. He looks terrifying. He has so many articles about the terrible things that he's done. And then all the aunts are like, huh, maybe we should take this seriously. Gosh, you think? Golly. Never would have thought. Oh my gosh. I love it. But yeah, I just wanted the aunties. Medi, could you shift? I guess it was more of a great Gatsby. Nick is the third person to the craziness happening around them, which I did not like because I preferred when Medi was a part of the ridiculousness. But also, I feel like there was way more going on in the first book. Yes. Because there was the date that went wrong and then dead body. And then she was trying to rekindle her romance with Nathan. And then there was the crazy wedding stuff. So the wedding was a thing in all of itself. And then there was a theft and a kidnapping and a drunken man goes down the aisle and there was a cop actively coming after them. Yeah, there are a lot more events that happened. There was way more going on and they all connect into insanity. But this one just had the mafia pl plot line. Just had the mafia plot line, which is a little lame. I know. It feels weaker for it. Like I said, I've read some of her other books. She can do a one plot, keep going, insanity keeps happening. But this one just, I don't know. It didn't feel like there was enough going on. So she just recircled with, oh no, Medi feels guilty for not telling Nathaniel. And she also feels embarrassed by her parents. But she also loves them. But mafia. So Medi in this book is kind of annoying. Kind of. And I don't mean the not telling Nathan thing and all of that stuff. I just mean her inner monologue is a little bit more annoying than it was in the last book. And I mean, specifically centered around whenever she would have thoughts about Nathan. Yeah. She says the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it really is the same script over and over again. It doesn't feel like things that people would say to themselves in their head about their soon to be spouse to some extent. For as much as she claims to love him. Yeah. And for the sappy moments, which there are sappy moments, which I like in the last book. I do kind of like them in this book, but yeah, there's some good moments, but there's a lot of times where she's like just going on and on and on and on and on about him. And I'm like, baby, you sound like a person that's been stalking him for years instead of someone that's about to marry him. <laughs> I get and I am fully on board with looking at someone that you're in love with that you're about to marry and being like, he's sexy, right? Because I mean, that's good. Yes. But oh my God, blah, 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 blah. And blah in his arms and blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, am I being creepy? Baby, yes. She does kind of dissect him now that you say it. 
I need you to sit down, please. <laughs> this is right in the middle of TMI. I don't, honey. They keep that we haven't seen each other in six or however many years. I think it was six years. Energy all the way through the wedding. And I will admit it is very new love-esque. <laughs> different thoughts. I agree. There would probably be a little bit different thoughts. Not so much dissecting every part of him, but being more like, dang. D- yeah, like, dang. How did I get so lucky? I'm going to marry that. That's mine now. And probably have some favorite parts about him. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love his eyes. I love his muscles. I like whatever. But yeah, she does dissect him. It's a lot. What is happening? It's that cliche romance moment where the author wants to describe them, but has to also make you think he's hot. Man, the easiest way to make a character hot is to not describe them. Not that much detail. If you're reading Pride and Prejudice, for instance, there are barely any descriptors for Darcy at all. Tall and he's dark and he's stoic. And that's about it. But what's funny is she doesn't describe him in this book. She just says he has nice arms. That's not a description. No, he's got nice arms and apparently he's got a nice butt. Because I just very distinctly remember her talking about his several times. I don't know. It did really go in between the, oh my gosh, I feel so guilty to this first puppy dog romance kind of vibe. I am chill with puppy dog romance. I really am. I write puppy dog romance. There is a limit and... She's definitely crossed into that weird, slightly stalkerish territory. I think it's the way it's intersected because it's, oh my gosh, the mafia, and I'm so worried, and someone's about to get murdered, but his butt. See, but she does that through the whole book. Yes. The book is interspaced with, oh, but Nathan is so dreamy. Uh Uh-huh. That's nice. What else do you like about him, though, other than just how he looks? Because I feel like she only rarely mentions other things about him other than how he looks. Because she does mention other things about him, but... He puts up with so much. He really does. And and what sucks... Okay, so this is what bothered me about the relationship, is you are actively watching it break down. Yes! At the wedding! And Medi isn't doing crap! Medi! He's this wonderful, amazing god of a man, but you can't have a simple conversation to him. Yeah, but she doesn't trust him. You don't have the respect enough for this man. No! It takes her so long to even say, I will explain later. Absolutely not. No, she lies! Every time, it's like, it's fine, nothing's happening. Yes! And he even has her off to the side at one point, and he's like, hey, I know something's up. What's up? And she's like, it's fine. And he's like, do you think I'm stupid? You're exactly right. He's like, I know there's something wrong. The author is so good at writing the breakdown, how it slowly you notice by things he's doing. Looks in her eyes and frowns. Things like smiling and it doesn't meet his eyes and then sad eyes and then frowning. Honey, he's not dumb. You know he's not dumb. You just did all of that at the hotel. He knows you murdered someone. I think he can handle the mafia. Especially since they're not really mafia. Spoilers. Oh my gosh. If they were paying attention at all, they would know that. Yes, but no. Mafia. Gosh, that was not. It was surprising in the moment because I thought everyone was just being incompetent. But then like, as I sit here, I'm like, it's as I reread it, it was not surprising that they weren't mafia. Mafia has underlings. They're not just a single family operating. I just, anyway. So the plot of the book, since we've ranted about Medi being kind of the downer of this book, but they think the mafia are there to murder somebody because Stephanie kind of made it seem like that was true, but it's okay because she's evil. But knowing how they wanted to do the thing at the end, I don't understand why she said that. Yeah. I mean, even if they're not mafia, she did kind of be like, yeah, we're here to kill someone. She's clearly as bad at being mafia as Medi is. Apparently she's trying to think quick of something to say to get Medi off her back. Second read through opened my eyes to several things. For real. So they think they're going to murder someone so they get to clue something about the queen and so they're like oh that's a code name for somebody and then they just decide this lady named Lillian. Okay their deductive reasoning for why it's Lillian tracks to some extent. It does until you get to the end and you're like wait a second. 
like it. Yeah. Because they do all this stuff. They're looking at these investors. They're like, oh, clearly it must be a huge investor of Nathan's. They're the only people important enough for the mafia to come after. That seemed flawed in and of itself, but that's beside the point. Okay, but they know the family members, right? They know, so they'd be able to pick out potential mafia in their family-ish. Yeah. But they didn't notice that Stephanie and her family works, quote unquote, mafia. For all we know, Annie has some stuff in her background. Anna, whatever the mom's name is. I was worried they were going to try and kill Nathan's mom. See, that's what I thought. And But then, no, they were just like this random lady, Lillian. Okay. Yep. So they think it's Lillian because Nathan treats her well. Because an important investor? Because she must be an important investor then because he treats her so well. So the ants basically spend the entire wedding and reception harassing and kidnapping this woman. This poor woman. Almost get her high via champagne, but the ants drink that. Okay, so they put THC into champagne glasses because they were going to try to get Stephanie drunk, which was a terrible idea because they've been so mean to Stephanie and the family members, but they walk up to her and be like, you're doing such a great job. Here's just this casual glass of champagne. Why don't you drink it on the job? So very quickly, she's like, no, I don't want to do that. That definitely seems suspicious. Couldn't imagine why. So the mom takes the glasses like, well, I'll drink it in her honor because they keep going back and forth and like, oh, if you don't drink it, we'll lose face. But if she does drink it, we'll lose face. And so the mom's like, well, I'll drink it in her honor. And so second aunt grabs it and downs it, which is rude. So they try to get Stephanie to drink it again. And I, it, anyway, second aunt ends up drinking two. Fourth aunt walks up with Lillian because she wasn't part of this conversation or process and drinks one and tries to hand one to Lillian but second aunt grabs that big aunt's like no I'm gonna drink this one and she drinks it and the grandma's like so these are clearly spiked takes one of the glasses and hands it to Annie just for the mom to steal that one and the grandma does it again this scene devolves so quickly so quickly but also everyone was being so dumb (sighs) So that's how the ants end up high and the mom ends up drunk. Stephanie gets her friends to take them back to the hotel, at which point they kidnap third uncle. Woo. No, third uncle's pre-kidnapped. That's right. Come to find out he's pre-kidnapped because he has different wrist ties than everyone else because everyone else has black and he has white. So he's been pre-kidnapped, but they're so but they're so high and drunk they don't realize that. This is the part where they talked about feeding him to cows and taking off his legs because Mendy's like, oh, can I borrow a wheelchair? And they're like, yes. And so they weakened up Bernie's this, even though he's unconscious, he's not dead. Yeah, because that makes sense. Let's just weaken it, Bernie's it. I mean, it worked. Honestly, of all their situations that was probably actually smart I'll give him that one so they pretend he's asleep and in a wheelchair and she's in her dress and they're in their outfits and she's like well we can't take him in a cab or people will realize he's unconscious so they just walk from the hotel which is 10 minute drive they walk to the church in their garb and I'm like how is this better because it is question mark they make it to the church and the aunties are like oh we'll go watch over Lillian which who was watching Lillian at this point easily could have been murdered But also Stephanie's like, I don't know where you went. I'm like, you guys are bad at this too. Also another great time for Mehdi to tell Nathan. Frustrating beyond belief. Anyway, they have the reception. And so they're like, oh no, this is so clever. The sign seating. So they're going to poison Lillian because they're still on that. Yeah, of course. And so they think of a way to try to distract people from eating. And so the aunties decide that they're going to do toast. I'm going to be honest. I skipped through all of this bit. I didn't listen to any of this. Okay, so I'll give you a quick summary. Thank you. They're concerned that she's going to poison them with food. So Big Aunt grabs the mic and is going to give a speech because that's all she could think of. And so everyone stops eating to listen to, except Big Aunt has a breakdown because what she does when she's high is cry. And she cries about how Medi's leaving her and she will never see her ever again, just like her actual child. And so Medi very awkwardly grabs the mic and is like, okay, thank you. And so then Big Aunt gives a speech because they still can't let people eat. And And she decides to get everyone to do Tai Chi. Oh, jeez. And she explains that if everyone doesn't do Tai Chi, it's going to be bad luck. To which Maddie thinks this is a great idea. While everyone's doing Tai Chi, she's going to go over to her plate and steal it. And I'm just like, this is all terrible ideas. Also, if this was me... 
No. If this was my husband, he would not care and he would be eating. Yes. <laughs> he was in my brother-in-law's wedding during the photos because they were taking a really... They took photos before and then they were taking photos in the middle. And it was right before they were supposed to go into the reception. He was very hungry because he hadn't eaten since lunch. And it was like 9 p.m. at that point. <laughs> he was just like, can we go eat food? <laughs> anyway, I feel like people would have been eating anyway. But anyway, I don't know when you picked back up. But while this is going on, third uncle comes conscious again, probably has a concussion cushion because he just moves the wheelchair that he's in and crashes into the cake. Of course. No, I missed that bit entirely. So he crashes into the cake. There's also a part where Mehdi looks up and thinks that the grandma has a pistol and he's just going to shoot him like that, except nothing really comes of that. I don't remember what happens with that. I think she was just seeing things. Yeah, there wasn't really a gun. I very distinctly remember there not really being a gun. Yeah. So he crashes into the table, which the mom and the aunties decide is a gunshot. And so they circle around Around Lillian to protect her. Not surprising. It was not a grunt shot. Nope. And there was a part outside the reception where Nathan at, like you said, what's going on? And they were alone. It, uh, yeah, sorry. I keep going back to that. Anyway, not the point. Security comes in, escorts everybody out. And he's like, we're done. So they walk by with him in the wheelchair again. And once again, knocked out at this point. Oh my God gosh. So at this point, I don't know if you loop back in. This is the point where everything kind of comes to a head between Medi's family and Nathan's family because Annie just kind of short circuits and starts calling him out for ruining this entire wedding. Yep. I listened to some of this. And Medi's upset on their behalf and I'm like, you're right. You should be. It's not on your aunts. It's on you. Medi ruined her own wedding. Yep. And you can't convince me otherwise. It works out because Nathan Nathan's like, hey, mom, don't be like that. And all of her aunties and mom are like, you can't speak like that to your elders. And he's like, but I was protecting you. And they're like, it doesn't matter. And that kind of like throws over whatever. And then Maddie is like, hey, let's all talk tomorrow. And Nathan's like, we're done. We are talking right now. Yeah, because good for him. And then, then she's like, hey, this is what happened. And Nathan's like, okay, what do I need to do? Yeah, that's what he would have done this entire time. I'm sure if he was like, I want to call off the wedding because the mafia, but she was like, no, we can't. He would have gotten involved. But also, he could have been the one to been like, hey, it's not going to be Lillian, because Lillian's not a rich investor. She's my godmother. And retired. Sigh. So this is the part where Maddie is like, oh my gosh, third uncle was planted. And so she calls the hotel and is like, hey, my friend's probably in our room. And could you give her this really cryptic message? And the people at the hotel are done with them. Absolutely done. Because earlier when they were in the room, they kept being loud and he kept going up and being like, hey, stop being loud. And they just kind of kept being rude. Anyway, so they're just done with them. And it's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll give them the message. Probably more professional sounding and British, but... Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Yep. Gives them the message to be like, hey, we have what you're looking for. Anyway, as you pointed out before, come to find out, the grandma's grandson is Aquan, and that was the cousin Stephanie was talking about. <sighs> and so the way they found out that he was murdered by them was Stephanie got hired at Nathan's hotel as a dishwasher to get all the gossip. And apparently they suck at keeping things under wrap because they figured out they murdered Aquan from gossip at the hotel. Anyway, so they think he died because of him stealing this tea ceremony gift because they would have viewed it as him stealing from the mafia, their family. That's so convoluted. The grandma breaks down letter is like, oh, I know he was a terrible person. And everyone was like, yeah, you spoiled him and made him rotten. You couldn't have come up with any other explanation than the mafia took him out. No, absolutely not. The mafia took him out, 100%. I, a little funny point, because Stephanie tried to report him to the sheriff that's in charge of the island, but they so messed up with the sheriff's brain that he was like, keep snooping around, I'm gonna jail you, because he's just incompetent. That was a little funny. I like that snippet back to the past book. But instead of just having a rational conversation at this point, because Manny's about to be like, hey, actually, the reason we killed him is because he was trying to, you know, uncontrollably consensual with me and I got scared and then whatever. But instead, the grandma just attacks Big Ant because of course, Big Ant's fascinator breaks apart and they find out I... I <laughs> Do you want to tell this part? What, that they had weed in the fascinator? The fake mafia 
hid weed in the fascinators and they totally made it past all of customs apparently this was their backup plan i can't with these people yeah in case they couldn't make third uncle disappear and make it look like Medi and her family had killed him well that was their third plan which was the original plan what the heck was their first plan i didn't even write it down it was something stupid yeah the whole thing's stupid but then you're right they're so bad at this you have fascinators filled with weed on their head I can't. How is everyone a grown-up in a Nickelodeon movie? How are you all this incompetent? What is this, eight people? You're right. You're absolutely right. Because Medi's like, hey, this is what actually happened. And the family's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll drop it. And all of them are like, yep. We absolutely believe that. Actually, we were just going along with this because he was grandma's favorite. That doesn't make it better. I'm sorry, what? Excuse me? Mm -mm. No, absolutely not. There is no excuse of culture, of tradition, of anything that four grown adults decided instead of being like, hey, grandma, maybe he wasn't a great person and fell into the wrong crowd. No, we're going to pretend to be a wedding vendor service so we can plan their weddings of a supposed mafia, because that's the only way he could have been taken down, apparently, and then threaten them the entire time and try to get them arrested. Yep, that's the only logical thing to do. Four grown adults. Yep. You have a person on like 25, 26, 28. No excuse. But then you have the uncles who are probably in their 40s, 50s. No, no, absolutely not. Nope. No way. Nada. Because immediately everyone's just like, yeah, he wasn't that great a person. So he probably did it. And then the grandma breaks down and she's like, I know he was a terrible person. Could we have had this come to Jesus moment a little bit sooner? So Medi's wedding got ruined for nothing. Everything was last minute ideas, both sides and no context. And I honestly, I don't understand why Stephanie pretended to be the mafia. I feel like she could have played off the conversation. It's like, take her out. What are you talking about? Duh, we're taking you out for drinks. She was drunk. She would have believed you. This book didn't need to happen. At least not like this. Not like this. Literally all of this happened because Stephanie decided that they were going to pretend to be mafia. I feel like when the day came, second aunt would have definitely been like, hey, what's up with this? But maybe not. She was kind of having a crush on them. So maybe she was played it off or something. But they wouldn't know the dress was nice. The flowers were nice. The catering was fine. There was a cake. They wouldn't have figured it out till the pictures came probably that they were true frauds and wedding pictures can take months if the pictures came but also why did they wait until london stephanie spent so much time with many that they felt like friends by the time the wedding came around why couldn't they pull something off in the states why did they have to go to london and yeah i guess maybe it's like oh the mo- they'll have pull with people in los angeles but yeah but even if she gets arrested in london she gets sent back to Los Angeles, because Los Angeles has jurisdiction. I don't understand the end game here of the fake mafia. I liked the first book better. Yep. And then the ending happens and Medi realizes that she's truly part of her family again. And she likes it just like last book. Although I liked last book better because it was like, oh no, curse. And so I feel extra bad. I get it, but it's exhausting. And she's like, you know what? They're not as embarrassing as they think. They're scrappy and resourceful and bootstrappers and they're awesome. And she promises next time that she's in trouble to tell Nathan, which I'm sure if there's a third book, I don't believe it. Doubt it. I will believe it when I see it. Maybe the next wedding's going to be second uncle and second aunt. There's still potential. No, they never have been. No. <laughs> Okay, so here's the really immature thing. I think this is where I was like, meh. Medi was like, wait a second, they're not trying to embarrass me. It was really immature and very main character syndrome a little bit, even though she is the main character, but not really. She's just there to witness the insanity, to be like, oh, they're trying to embarrass me. No, the entire time they've been trying to do well. Like they didn't try to learn British to embarrass you. They tried to learn British so that they would get along with your 
in-laws better and they would appreciate that they took the effort to speak their language, even though it's still English. It's still just English. But they tried. They did try. They tried really hard. I feel like there was this good lesson in this last book. And then this book, it was just Medi being embarrassed. Because the author talks about she wrote this and she wanted to point out how different families act differently. Because Nathan is half Chinese. His dad is Chinese. And so it's like, oh, he's a British Chinese person. And he might have been from a different part of China from the way they made it sound. Because she made a big deal about her family being Indo-Chinese. So I don't know if he was from a different part or not. But she wanted to point out how it's different in every family. And I wonder if it could have been good if Nathan was embarrassed by his parents at some point. But we really don't see enough of Nathan for that to be a thing. Because at the end, Medi just decides to ignore Annie. And it's fine if she doesn't like her family. Yo. Eh? She held it in for a while, though. Oh, no. You know what the next one should be? I take it back. Because they make horrifying, absolutely terrible shirts for her and Nathan. But then they make one for a baby. And it's supposed to be this English Indo-Chinese wedding fusion that goes terribly wrong because of course it is. And they get two business class tickets to Indonesia for him to go meet the entire family, which is exciting. So I see either baby shower maybe being the next one or maybe they get roped into doing a wedding in Indonesia. That could be cool. But at this point, Annie's just being mean for no reason. That's nice. Not very British of you, Annie. She's gone. She's like, I'm done. But yeah, Annie's just mean now. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's great. Woo. The fake mafia forgave them faster than Annie did. And it wasn't even her wedding. Okay. So interesting thing at the end, I just want to add. Apparently, because they're like, oh, well, how did you pull off the wedding stuff? And they did a bunch of research before. And Big Uncle was the quote unquote florist. But actually what he did was he hired a local wedding vendor to do it. Why didn't they do that for everything? Oh, here's my assistant. Because you can't really do that with makeup. That's a lot of money. They could have held their cover much better. If nothing else, Stephanie could have had an assistant. They clearly didn't plan anything. No, they didn't. You're so right. I keep expecting them to have a plan. No, there is no plan. There is only revenge. There is no plan. There's not even a good revenge plan. I kind of wish we could have seen Third Uncle try to MC, but he got off easy. He just got kidnapped pretty early. Yeah, by himself. And then it turns out the grandma is the only one who's actually good at the job. <laughs> Why didn't they make it more of a disaster? I couldn't tell you. If they were gonna half-butt it, make it absolutely embarrassing. I don't know. I don't even know. I just, ah, general thoughts. I don't know. It feels like a sophomore slump to me. Just a little. She's a speed writer because I follow her on Twitter and other things. She did NaNoWriMo, wrote a book in a month, and she was like, oh, I understand the process. And so she's a speed writer. And there are benefits to that. She's the type of person that will take a weekend and hammer out 20,000 words because she went to a hotel. And so there are benefits of that because you can definitely feel the manic energy going all along of, oh my gosh, what's about to happen next? Which works for what she wrote. Rides. But I wonder if she had more time to plan the first book. Before she banged it out, yeah. And this one, she didn't. She publishes like three books a year. I swear. That is not even an exaggeration. I found out recently that Terry Pratchett, one of my all-time favorite writers who is deceased. Anyway, he only ever wrote like 400 words a day and still managed to pop out 49 Discworld books on top of everything else that he wrote. I think I'm going to take after him, thanks. <laughs> yeah. She published two books in 2021, four books in 2022, and she's on track for four books in 2023. This woman is part animatronics so much. And so that's why I'm like, there's no way you can give as much planning. I feel like the new girl, which is the one I mentioned about stabbing the t-shirt halfway through, spoilers, did a better job of that manic energy, but it still wasn't as good as Dial A for Aunties. Because Dial A for Aunties, I just wanted to go out and give it to everyone because I love it so much. There's less going on with this book. Maddie seems to do less because she does. And the first one felt like family against the world. And this one is just family against themselves, which causes a lot of frustration with everyone involved. Involved. For real. And I feel bad for, for Medi. Her wedding kind of got ruined for no reason. I feel like she should have been more mad about that. Maybe she was just relieved no one was mafia. No one's trying to murder them. They had a truce of sort. What are your thoughts? This was definitely a book that I read <laughs> and don't plan on reading again. To get to that question. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind listening to it again, but I would only do it on audiobook at 3x speed. 
I would much rather read the first book again. Curious if there's going to be a third book in the series? I don't know. We'll see if there's a third book. Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers looks interesting. That's not part of this series, but I bet it's in the similar vein. But it seems to be from an auntie's perspective. Mm. So that might be interesting. But from what she has announced coming out this year, it doesn't look like another auntie's book. So we will see. She also wrote a romance, more of a romance, but it's called, well, that was unexpected. Which I think encapsulate Jesse Q. Sutanto's writing. Yep. Well, that was unexpected. Here we go. You are on for a train ride from beginning to end, except for this book. You could have gotten off at several stations. We did not. One question for the author. I want to know what's the difference between book one and book two. I think it's less planning or maybe it's just less time to flesh out ideas, less inspiration even. I don't know. I'd be curious the difference of the writing process of the two because I hope it's just a sophomore slump. I want to know if there's anything she would change if slash when she rereads it, when she goes back through it, she's like, I would have done this differently. I wonder if she has that thought. Because I mean, I'm sure everybody has that a little bit with things that they write. You'd be like, wow, I would have written this like this or would have written this like that. I wonder if there's big plot points that she would change. Or if she would add something. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like every author looks back in their books and they're like, oh, I could have changed this. But yeah, I'd be curious to see what she thinks. Maybe a little more time passage. Maybe. Rating. I'd give it rain at an outdoor wedding out of 10. Not a complete waste. You probably have a secondary location or a tent or something, but it's a real shame. Or umbrellas or something. Yeah. It's not as great as it could have been. I think I gave it, what did I give it? Like a four star or a three star? While I look that up, why don't you tell us what your rating is? I'm too tired to come up with anything creative. My brain's starting to shut off. So it's a four out of ten. It's not bad, but I didn't like it. It's not for me. I give it a the mafia shows up at my wedding out of ten. It's not that bad. <laughs> no, more like the uncle that I didn't invite showed up at my wedding and brought his dog that ate my cake. It's fine. I'm not happy, but it could definitely be worse. Like the mafia showing up to my wedding. But also in a way, it's less interesting interesting than the mafia showing up at my wedding. Yeah, it's just kind of like, well, that happened. Moving on. And I'm going to complain about it for the rest of the forever. Because, you know, foreseeably everything else went rather smoothly. It's just that his dog ate my cake and I told him he couldn't come and he showed up anyway. Or more likely, now I have to hunt down who the heck told him this was happening so that he showed up. Because that was rule one is don't tell uncle. (laughs) Oh, yes. Poor York. I knew him once. Alas. Dial A for aunties is great, guys. Yeah, that one's good. Highly recommend. Just reread that twice. (laughs) Just reread that twice. But have you read this book? If you could have a couture fascinator, what would it look like? Do you have any book recommendations for us? Tell us all about it in the comments below. If you like the video, hit like. And if you're enjoying yourself, hit subscribe for more. Thank you for exploring four aunties in a wedding with us. I'm Sam Reiner. And I'm Lucy Sawyer. And we hope to see you and a friend here next time. Escape with Me Book Club is Lunar Skull Production. Check us out on TikTok or Instagram to keep up date with us. Lunar underscore S-K-U-L-K.